Hello, welcome to Excel Highway, your one-stop shop for all your Excel needs. Today I want to share with you a truck fleet management file that I created. This is supposed to help you manage your uh, trucks, your drivers, revenues, give you an ability to have a prepare a cost analysis, and basically this could be a starting point for you before you go ahead and purchase a costly uh, system. You may find some, if not all of this, to really show you what you need. So the file consists of five different sheets. There's the dashboard that you're seeing right now. The dashboard, as the name suggests, gives you some data, data visualization in the form of charts. There's the ability to filter the information above by selecting company and ranges of dates. And you have um, six different charts here. On the bottom of the dashboard is where you can see the same information and a bit more, but in a table view. Okay. Over here on the right, you can see some of the information that feeds the charts. I'll get to how this is built later, but keep in mind that unlike other dashboards that I created, this is not based on pivot tables. So there are no slicers and there's no pivot tables here. There is some VBA coding, uh, which I'll share. So this is the dashboard sheet. The dispatch database is where you key in the information uh, for the dispatches. So there's the orange columns are the ones that are formulated and the blue ones are the ones that you need to key in information. And there's all sorts of information related to the dispatching costs, the mileage, locations, etc., etc. Cost database is where you key in information about fuel and the actual miles that, that that driver drove. And also there's some calculations over here. The maintenance is also something that you key in re relating costs of the maintenance. List is where there are certain lists that help us with drop down and calculations and all of that. So that was the short intro. Let's deep dive into the list part. The list sheet is basically where you build your, your backend database for all the information that you want to share here. So there's a company data table. Notice all of these here are tables. So there's the company name, full name, and some more information that you can add. You can also add more columns, of course, and use this for other related analysis that you want to prepare. Um, what's important that I'm using here a lot of ranges and I'm using a table because then the range is, th th is dynamical. So you'll notice, well, you don't, you don't, you don't notice, but what I did, I, I actually, um, called this area company. Okay. So if you're not familiar with how to assign a range, you need to just select the area and write company. It's not going to make a change, right? Because it's the same. And what's good about doing this for a table is that whenever I add, let me show you if I now equal company, sorry, company, it's going to give me those three names. If I add another name, it's just going to automatically, automatically appear as part of the range. That's why I recommend doing that. So I have the company name. That's, that's the first table. Second table, I have the driver data, the company which now I use a drop down selection referencing that range and the driver name, which is also a drop down selection, which I have over here on the right. Well, I'll show you. So you have the company driver name, the rate for loaded and the rate for empty mile, which is how I'm calculating the cost of the driver pay and some more information about the drivers. There's a yes, no, just for, um, areas where you want to flag a yes or no. And there's the maintenance type where you can also add more types. And this is also a range. This one is called maintenance. Now you'll notice there are, these are the driver lists. So each company I have, obviously all the information here is dummy data, but for each company, I have their name here as a table. And I'm actually calling this range, the drivers below them also in the name above. So all three match. So you have the name over here, 
the name over here and the name of the ranges so and by doing so I'm able to create a dependable drop-down list so over here the formula to create that list you go over to data data validation it will be on any value so you select list and uh, equals company which is the range that we have over here here to create that dependency you do the same but on the list you write indirect j which is the first column and three which is the first row referencing that company so in, in, in essence it's listing the name ABC and the name ABC or world trucking or whatever I have over there is the name of the range okay so that's how you build that uh, dependable uh, drop-down list which could be a uh, YouTube on its own <laughs> so this is where you maintain the information you do it once and then you can use it all around maintenance database in the maintenance database you have some columns company as you saw drop-down list and once I select a company the driver can only be from ABC so um, that's using the dependent drop-downs the truck number the date what kind of maintenance again this was the drop-down list we created before any remarks and the cost and you'll notice there's a weekend date that's is, that's the calculation um, adding 7 minus the weekday of that date because I want to have a date in a weekly bucket I'm going to use that later on so you'll see that in all three tables cost database again company driver date fuel cost actual miles empty miles the rate per loaded mile and per empty mile it's a simple VLOOKUP going over here looking for these two values based on the driver name that's all it is and the driver pay is just a sum product of both arrays if you're not familiar with sum product it's a multiple of two arrays so what it does it multiplies this number by this number plus this number by this number it's a very nice um, function you should be using and again we have the weekend column so this is the cost database the dispatch database has more information the company the driver name the truck number what is the customer name the load number is it a pickup or a delivery location city state the date of the delivery or the pickup the time loaded miles empty miles total miles which is the combination of both the rate that you received for that delivery factoring which is one of the costs that you have and in percentage and here it's in actual dollars then there's a few different costs that you may have associated with your uh, deliveries like truck wash stop detention so you have a total cost with sums all four did you invoice this customer and this is where we use the yes no coming from here okay and did you were you paid and again the weekend date and this basically is actually why I'm using I'm not using a pivot table here because I have three different um, three different uh, tables and of course I could create uh, one table that you know picks up everything and combines it and merges but this is also a nice way for you to look to see that you could do it actually without a pivot table and connect different uh, sources so now we're going to the dashboard so the dashboard basically what we have is very simple these are the formulas okay I have a running date okay that basically pulls the from and to I'm using max to see if I if I have more than the maximum date if I've, if I've suppressed it or not and again it's on a weekend basis so even if I write a number that's not a weekend it only checks on weekends and you can see I'll unhide in a minute I'll unhide, I'll unhide the rows and then we have the data itself so each each of these is usually a sum if or just a, a calculation you could do here on the table you see it's all of these are some ifs or a calculation of the different 
uh, cells here. So all of these are some ifs coming from the other tables. So some of them are coming from the dispatch, some of them are coming from the cost, and some are coming from the maintenance. And this is a very simple way to do it without you know, con combining everything. And the some ifs, all of them are basically looking at the name of the company and the date. Okay? And we all have it. That's what's shared with, between all of them, the company. So you have all this information. You have a total line, which is using subtotal. So if anything is hidden, it shouldn't be shown. Now, over here on the right is where I created um, also information on a driver name uh, or on a truck basis. So first of all, I'm using indirect, again, to get the list of the drivers. I want to see the driver name, and I don't want to have any drivers that are not part of this. Okay, so basically, on a certain, since we have only four drivers, I'm going to only see four columns. The rest of these columns, which I'll show you, are hidden, basically, because there's no value. And then again, I'm using just some, a simple sum if referencing the name of the driver with whatever information I want to show. In this case, it's the total revenue. Maintenance, it's simple. I'm just looking for sum ifs with the company name in the maintenance table. And revenue by truck, it's very similar to um, the driver. I'm pulling, actually, here I'm using, I don't have the truck as a list, so I'm using unique and filter so I'm basically filtering with here the name the truck numbers based on the name of the company if you're not familiar with filter and unique these are office 365 functions that are very useful if you want to work with arrays um, very easily basically what this does it filters as as the word says it filters the, the range based on a, a different uh, range. So I'm filtering column D in dispatch database based on column B equals A2, which is the company name. So essentially, I'm getting all of these truck numbers. But since I only want one value, I'm using unique. That's how I'm getting the, the, truck, um, the truck numbers. And I'm using the same trick here whenever there's an empty a truck I'm just gonna hide it and the formula itself is a sum ifs so what's the trick you may ask so all of the charts here are simple charts for these data you can see it's pie charts it's you know columns combos whatever thing is I'm always selecting a huge range if I unhide it So, give it a second, you see, now I have a lot of dates and the whole, the whole um, sheet is messed up, I'll, sorry, the whole chart is messed up. I'll do the same for the columns, for the trucks and the drivers, and now you'll see basically how it looks if I don't hide everything. Okay, you see there's a lot of drivers with zeros, a lot of trucks with no information, and it doesn't look, it's not very readable. So what I added is a simple VBA code that hides the rows and hides the columns if there's no values. So if you right click on view code, you will see this code. And I'll post the code in the description. So it's a very simple code. It runs whenever there's a change in um, any of these cells. And once it finds a change, it's going to hide rows or hide columns. It's a very simple two loops, two for loops. First of all, I'm unhiding everything. Then I'm going to go from 34 through 199. These are the rows. And if there's a value of zero, I'm just going to hide it. So this could also help if you have weeks in between your weeks where there's no data. It just looks a lot nicer this way. You don't want to see zero, unless you do, which is also up to you. You could build this filter however you want. 
The same for the columns. So first of all, I'm unhiding all the columns, and then I have a simple loop for the columns, 19 through 54. That's the column index. And I'm looking for row 32, and I'm asking, is row 32, I, column index, does it have any value? And if not, I'm unhiding it. And that's how I very easily um, unhide everything. And you'll see that once I change company to ABC, it takes a few seconds to load it. First of all, the uh, all the information will change, but also you're only going to see information that's relevant. So you only see three weeks with data, you only see drivers with data, and you only see trucks with data. Okay, I can switch to uh, another company, and you would see information, different information, different names, different values. Okay, and it's actually it's it's uh, very easy to update because um, all you need to do is update these columns and everything else will be updated. If if we're on World Trucking now, and I want to add let's say a repair, let's let's say I want to add a repair for truck number seven. Uh, okay. I don't have repairs now, but now I'll just add thousand dollars, and you're going to see it immediately appear. So that's one of the advantages of doing it this way. The only part that's let's say maybe tricky is that you see there's a nice background of a truck, and you have these lines in between. That's very simple to do. I downloaded a photo. I'll bring it to the front of a truck. Nice photo of a truck from one of the free, um, you know, uh, picture sites on Splash, I think it's called. I moved it to the back. I removed all the lines and the out outlines. Um, I changed the uh, the color. Okay, it was white. I went to something like this, grayish. And what I also did, I added some transparency. Okay, so you see the truck. If I have no transparency, you don't see the truck, which I think is nice. Um, and, I and as you see, I have no border. Okay, I think it, look it looks better that way. And what, what I also did, I, I, I spaced a bit the, the charts one from another. And that's how you see like these nice lines, nice straight lines. Uh, so that gives it a little bit of a nicer look to the dashboard. And, and of course, colored everything in white because um, the background is a bit, uh, background is gray, so it looks more uh, better this way. So that's it. If you enjoyed the video uh, and you're still with me here, uh, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, if you want to get this file, um, if you have, uh, if you want to uh, subscribe, feel free to do so as I'm posting new content daily. Have a good one.